but uh, I like to give a little fentanyl, which is a narcotic. It seems to, uh, it uh, takes care of some pain and it also diminishes the stress of the intubation process. You ready? Excited. 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 Yeah. Most important thing, oxygen. Couple deep breaths, relax. Now the next medicine I like to give is lidocaine. It kind of numbs up the uh, inside which it, of, the, uh, of the vein because uh, the next medicine that I give ordinarily would be painful. And it's called propofol. That's the medicine that puts people to sleep. Great medicine, except it burns. There is, I'm going to use a non depolarizing muscle relaxant. Um, some people use the depolarizer, I could, but for I usually opt for the non depolarizer. Uh, succinylcholine is the depolarizer, it's got some issues we won't go into today, but this lasts a little longer and it requires a reversal. What is it? This is Zemuron. This and, is propofol. And this is propofol going in right now. May burn just a little bit. It'll go away in a minute. And what's this doing? This is putting this patient to sleep. And this is the painful medication. That can burn a little bit. Does it burn? You notice it burn? A little yeah. bit? Okay. And this is the Zemuron? This is the Zemuron. This is the it's what? It's a paralytic agent. This is steroid, it's Decadron. For what? And that, it kind of helps with nausea. I'll give another no anti-nausea medicine later also. Uh, but that helps with that. Plus it, uh, you know, with the intubation process, it uh, helps she's, take care of. Okay. She's already asleep, huh? She's already yeah. asleep. Yeah. I will oftentimes just check by brushing my finger over the eyelid to see if she has response. What are you and doing? You see, she does not. What are you doing right there? I am uh, I'm ventilating by ma uh, bag, just kind of, we call it bag ventilation. Okay. I'm just uh, giving her some oxygen or giving her uh, some ventilation process. And I do that for uh, a few seconds. Good five or six good uh, what do I have here? I like uh, to use a uh, laryngoscope with a Mac 3 blade uh, for her and uh, to intubate her. I tilt the chin, the head back a little bit. Stick the blade in. We put it over to the right side of her mouth to pull the tongue out of the way. And then we look for, that's the epiglottis, if you can see the edge of it there and then pull forward and we can see her vocal cords. Can you see them there? Yeah. Right there, okay. right there they are. And we just take and follow the right through those cords and we put the endotracheal tube in there. Carefully watch the teeth, don't get that metal against the teeth blow up our cuff so that she has a good airway. Put her up to our ventilator machine. First off, check it by, my, uh, by hand again. I know I'm in because I see a uh, mist coming back. And then I can look up here and I can see entitled CO2 and that looks good. And of course, now I can put her on the ventilator. Turn on my gas. There's two main sleep gas, one of them is nitrous oxide that we use here, and a sieve of chlorine. It's the only uh, other sleep gas that we have here. Okay, now. Perfect. This, this got too deep for some reason. Let me just pull it out a little bit. So What's the problem me, if you go too deep? Well, we wind up. If you go too deep, you're going to wind up in the, usually, it's called uh, into the right main stem bronchus. 
So you'll only be ventilating one side of her lungs. You'll be ventilating the right side and leaving the left side alone. That gets to be a real problem because uh, there's a huge shunt going on.